Delphi Retrospective. This presentation was originally developed to be given at the Toronto Delphi Users Group in February 2015, and the timing was supposed to coincide neatly with Delphi's 20th birthday, which was February 14th of 2015. My name is Warren Postma. I'm a blogger. I blog at DelphiCodeMonkey.com. And I'll admit my bias right up front, I love Delphi. I've used every major version of Delphi professionally. I have used a dozen other languages and IDEs professionally. And I've used a lot of other operating systems other than Windows. Um, almost every tool I've ever used, eventually I get around to the point where I can say something good about it. Um, but Delphi is kind of unique in my experience. Uh, and that's what this presentation is all about, is why I think it's unique and uh, my experience of being a Delphi developer uh, is basically positive and, and I want to go into why. Um, so given a choice, I will always choose Delphi, especially on Windows where it was born and really grew up and the IDE obviously is going to be on Windows for some time, but uh, Delphi has recently moved up along and is capable of doing a lot more than Windows now. Um, but I actually haven't done much on mobile or Mac, but I am an expert. So I started out as a kid really interested in computers and I really wanted a computer. And in my elementary school library, I think there was one book on computers and it said that sometimes computers could be as small as a typewriter and a desk. And I think that book was probably published in about 1965. I was aware that computers had moved on, but my public school library was not aware of that. I saved up my pennies, I bought a Commodore 64, I learned to program in BASIC on the thing, I learned assembly language on the thing, um, and actually uh, got quite good at both the BASIC and the assembly language. I, originally, I then eventually moved on to a PC. Around about 1988 I got my start in Pascal, I bought Turbo Pascal Professional 5.5. Uh, and that was the first version, I think, that had the object-oriented syntax, which is basically making it very similar to the modern Delphi syntax, although there's some differences. Um, in fact, actually, the original Turbo Pascal style of doing objects is still available to you in Delphi today. The backwards compatibility is incredible. I've got a little screenshot here showing uh, Epson Equity 1, which was my first PC compatible. And beside that, there is a modem that's a Practical Peripherals 14 0.4k baud modem. Uh, it was quite expensive when I bought that modem around 1989. I think it was one of the fastest modems you could buy around 89, 1990. And I ran a bulletin board system on that. So this is an ad for the Turbo Pascal 5.5 from the era. And I don't know if you noticed the little Porsche on here, but he shows up on the Delphi 1.0 installer. It's the dashboard installer in Delphi 1.0. This idea that Delphi and Pascal gives you a lot of speed, uh, especially compared to the C and C++ compilers of that day, and even compared to the C and C++ compilers of today. It's still one of the things that uh, you'll know a Delphi aficionado by their unwillingness to wait for other tools. So I am a geek. I have a computer science degree. I've been a senior software developer for some time now at a variety of companies that usually work with Delphi and sometimes other things as well as Delphi. Currently, I'm an Embarcadero MVP, which basically means that I'm a Delphi blogger who loves Delphi, and what I contribute to Embarcadero, hopefully, is some feedback to them that helps them. And uh, what they contribute to me is a free license to Delphi for my personal use. Um, and basically, it's a friendly relationship, and it's a community uh, kind of a relationship. Uh, it's recognizing community members who really, you know, who build the community and it's a it's a good program and I'm glad to be one of the MVPs. Uh, in my previous roles I've worked a lot in engineering, um, science, uh, I actually worked at Embarcadero for a while uh, and I've worked at a, a number of different industries and vertical markets. Um, my blog the address is there and I have a lot of points on Stack Overflow for answering Delphi questions. Other stuff that I know uh, I've used every version of Visual Studio, mostly with C++, um, starting from about 6.0 up to the modern era. I've done a tiny bit of C Sharp and VB. Um, and actually, I have some respect for C Sharp. I don't really like VB very much, though. Um, I used something before uh, Delphi came out called Sierra Realizer, which was like a 
uh, competitor to Visual Basic. Back in the 80s and 90s, I did quite a lot of database-driven de development uh, using DBase for DOS, Fox Pro, Access, Paradox, DOS and Windows, and other languages like Smalltalk and Rex. Uh, these are all a long time ago, though. Uh, more recently, uh, I've become quite good at Objective-C and Xcode. Um, I have spent some years in my career working on Unix. Uh, I know in C and C++ from a Unix command line development point of view. Um, and I really like Python. I've used Python on just about every platform that Python runs on. I really like Python. It's not really a, a high-speed compiled solution like Delphi, but for scripts and tools that don't need the high performance, I find Python quite fun. Um, I've used every version of Windows from 3.0 to 3.1 up to the latest uh, Windows 8.1 and Server 2012 R2. And done a lot of desktop and embedded Linux work. Uh, I've worked in other Unixes. I've worked in FreeBSD and Solaris. I've done a lot of embedded systems, microcontroller, single board, computer work. And back in the day before it died, I did a lot of OS2. In fact, when Delphi was first released, I was actually a professional OS2 software developer in C++. So I was born in 1970. The roots of Pascal go back to 1968 and 69. The first published paper on Pascal that formally defined it, um, and shortly thereafter, the first working implementation of Pascal would have been um, around the same year as I was born. And I started working in Pascal when I was 18, which is 1988, and that's about the era that the Turbo Pascal 5.5 came out. Um, the object syntax that Borland used for their objects uh, was originally specified by an object Pascal that was used at Apple. Uh, I don't know if very many people knew this, but the ROMs for the original Macintosh were actually entirely written using Pascal. So Pascal was actually the systems language of Apple back in 1984. Um, since then, I would say their systems languages are C for their kernel and Objective-C for their user side. Uh, 1995 is when our story starts, though. Del you know, is released. Uh, the first time I tried it, I was an OS2 programmer, and I was just blown away by the way that you could just click and have a Windows binary without even reading the Chuck Petzold book, uh, Windows 95, and there was actually a programming Windows book that came out before Windows 95 that explained, you know, how to call create window and how to make a message loop uh, by hand. And you could do that in C, and you could do that in Pascal. There was a product called Turbo Pascal for Windows. But just the lack of needing to know all of this gory detail to be able to just get going. This is a key thing that I think a tool ought to provide and to just get you onto a platform without having to learn really the gory details, especially when the platform is as gross as the underlying Win32 platform is. Um, it was obviously, a, I think, a 1980s design, uh, the API. And Microsoft has, of course, tried to get away from it at various points and found that, no, they can't. Uh, it's a contract now, it's a very important platform and they cannot change it. And that's fine because that's what frameworks are for. And Delphi 1, I think, included the VCL 1.0, which was really the first framework really worth using. Um, and it was the first framework that gave you a huge amount of capability without actually preventing you from doing anything that you couldn't do uh, if you just went native. Because whenever you wanted to in Delphi, and you still can today, you can go back to the Win32 API. And sometimes you do need to, but most of the time you don't. So as I said, I was working on Visual Age C++, which was an IBM compiler, and I used IBM's absolutely awful user interface framework for the OS2 presentation ma uh, manager. And I, the, the difference between the Delphi VCL and how nice it was compared to uh, how awful the Win32 platform was, it showed me that someone could build a platform and a framework and, and do it properly. Delphi 2 was a huge uh, release because it went from 16-bit to 32-bit. I bought my own copy of this, and as I remember it, it came on CD and it had Delphi 1 on the CD as well. Um, I used it to prototype software for my employers. They liked the tool, and I got to build a few little projects with it, but most of my work at this point was typically C and C++. Um, I started to learn how to develop my own components starting in Delphi 2. Uh, a few years after this, Ray Kanopka released a really great book. <laughs> on component development called uh, Developing Custom Delphi 3 Components uh, by Ray Knopka. And this was the first version that didn't have the 255 character Pascal string limit. It had uh, the long string, which we call ANSI string type in modern Delphi. 
um, and I believe it had a wide string field as well, which was basically just to wrap up the Windows B string type, um, but not as fully Unicode capable as later versions became. So Delphi 3 I used very heavily. I used it to build engineering and control systems applications. I built a lot of serial communications protocols code that talked over modems or it talked over RS-485 uh, cables to go out to talk to industrial equipment and uh, factory automation systems. Um, I wrote a Modbus component for Delphi. It was a non-visual component. It basically, you drop it on the form, you pick a COM port, and then you tell it what uh, slave addresses to talk to, and it will go and get data, read and write, uh, and control remote devices. So that component approach is not just a, an approach that's useful for dropping buttons onto uh, forms. It's also a way of building uh, really reusable application domain uh, features that can then be dropped into different applications without any mess. And I think this approach is still underutilized in the world today. Um, this Delphi 3 was the first version with the modern package system. It had Midas, which was sort of an uh, object, uh, remote object system. Uh, it added interfaces and COM, and the data set started to become abstract, which was basically what allowed you to move away from just uh, the BBE, which was the original database engine in Delphi 1. In Delphi 4 era, I was working for an engineering company in London, Ontario. I found it very easy to upgrade everything, uh, get my packages rebuilt and move up. Uh, in those days, the code bases that I would use, be using would be a lot smaller than the code bases that I find I'm using today. A lot fewer packages, a lot fewer components. Uh, I remember attending the Delphi 4 launch event with David Intersimion, who's still a Delphi evangelist in Barcadero today, uh, at the launch event in 1998. I learned my first version control system in 1998, which was Visual Source Safe, which is disgusting. And if any of you are still using it who listen to this recording, you should be ashamed of yourself. Um, Delphi 4 added a lot of features to the VCL framework, which is, of course, one of the key things that makes Delphi Delphi. Uh, it added actions, anchors, uh, overloading, default parameters for methods, uh, the resource string keyword, which basically allowed uh, you to do resource strings and localization properly. Um, for me, basically between four, five, six, and seven, I didn't really observe that much of a change, you know, in using the product. The product features that came out were useful, but kind of minor in the five, six, seven stretch. During this period, I did a lot of OLA com and DCOM work. I made a big bet on DCOM, which turned out to have been a bad idea. Uh, Delphi 5 added frames and uh, the first ADO components and the first binding MSF XML parser binding. Uh, a very capable platform and I think there might even still be people out there today still using Delphi 5 and 6, although in my opinion they shouldn't. Uh, so Delphi 6 is one of the versions that I see people do get stuck on and it is a pretty good version, uh, although it's getting pretty old. Uh, I found Delphi 7 to be an incrementally better release so I didn't stick on Delphi 6 much, but I've noticed that 6 and 7 are the two places where people seem to dig trenches and stay, uh, which is something I want to talk about a little bit later. Um, I built some remote controllable systems. Um, SCADA means supervisory control and data acquisition. That basically means factory automation systems, um, pr process control, stuff that electrical engineers would do when they are controlling, say, a factory line or uh, even a scientific process. Supervisory control basically means there's two levels of control. There's a PLC, which is basically an industrial computer that controls relays and switches and motors. And then there's a computer system talking to that that does the supervisory control. And that's the kind of stuff that I wrote uh, using Delphi. So it's not your typical database-driven development, which is actually one of the things that Delphi is absolutely fantastic at doing. But my experience wasn't doing the thing that most people do in Delphi. It was doing my own industrial control stuff. So in the Delphi 7 era, this is the last of the integrated IDE, pre-integrated IDE versions. Uh, the startup name of the executable these days is BBS EXE. Up until Delphi 7 and including Delphi 7, I believe it was called Delphi 32 EXE. So it's still 32-bit, has been since Delphi 2. Has some partial but incomplete Unicode support and the VCL was not Unicode yet. Uh, it was ANSI string only still. Still a great version and the one that I've probably logged more hours on than anything else. Um, and to be honest with you, I installed Delphi 2005, 2006, and 2007, and I used them all professionally, but I didn't log as many hours in them as I did in Delphi 7. And really, actually, the next version that was as uh, 
go-to stable and rugged and reliable for me that I never went back to Delphi 7 after that was Delphi 2007. Um, so as I said, I've logged a lot of hours on this. This one added the support for XP themes, although it was hard-coded, you couldn't modify the manifest file. In fact, actually a lot of people would use that feature and not know what a manifest file was. Um, and you could usually get away with that, but uh, if you didn't, then you'd have to do it manually. Uh, the Delphi 7 remote debugger was quite useful. I used that a lot so that I didn't have to install Delphi itself and all my source code on some machine just so that I could reproduce a problem that was only happening on one machine. Um, such as a client machine, I could get in there and debug and figure out what was going on when something happened. A lot of great bug fixes. Delphi 7 was widely understood as a, uh, a polish release to some people, and some people might poo-poo that because they didn't think it had big features, but really, when you work all day every day with the product, the most important feature to me is stability. Always has been and always will be. The core features are there, they're useful, we add more features, great, but stability is the thing that I want most out of the new release of Delphi. Delphi 8. I did not use this one professionally, but I'm mentioning it anyways. Um, remember Microsoft's statement that the Win32 API was going away completely and that you would have to use .NET if you wanted to write applications? Well, that would get me, you know, thinking that I needed a .NET uh, tool. And, and I think Borland and CodeGear did think that. And they believed Microsoft because basically Microsoft had the power, it seemed, to basically do this. But the funny thing is that Microsoft's own internal people rebelled against this. Uh, the Office team told the Windows team in no uncertain terms that they could uh, go and take that idea and put it where the sun doesn't shine. Um, and internally, uh, this was hugely a fractious thing, and externally, of course, it was hugely fractious. Uh, .NET turned out not to be the only way to write apps. In fact, now it's just one of several ways to target Windows, and it's not even actually perhaps the most modern way now, now that basically uh, Microsoft has changed directions again. and uh, my caution to people who, who uh, keep following Microsoft every time they make a new leap uh, is to make sure that you don't jump too early because if you, for example, jumped onto the Silverlight bandwagon, you're probably regretting that now. So 2005, I used this one. I like the new IDE, although actually I longed for the old uh, component palette back for a while. Uh, a lot of old timers like me hated using the old tool palette or liked the old palette and didn't like the new one. They didn't want to move up to this version. Um, there was a kind of a workflow that Delphi 1 through 7 had where you basically would have a form and the designer was floating and it was on the desktop so your designed form and your runtime form could be in the same position and uh, when you ran the form that you were designing turned into the form you were running and this allowed you to iterate really rapidly on very small applications. But uh, what I would say to people who like that feature is that that feature really doesn't scale up to the scale of development that uh, is done today. I don't miss that anymore because there's not one main form in any decent sized application. There's a lot of different areas that are main forms for different uh, purposes or uh, things that you would concentrate on one, on one day. You may only want to concentrate on some form that's seven forms down from the main form and you'll be working all day on that form. And I don't really find I miss the, uh, the old workflow that Delphi 1 had. Nevertheless, when you demo Delphi 1 through 7, I think there's something immediate about that that really helps people get the product. Um, Delphi 2005 had somewhat usable database development in Unicode fields, like wide string fields and data sets, but uh, not too many people were using Unicode yet. If I remember correctly, you could have crystal reports back here. Crystal reports has died since then. You cannot run crystal reports with any modern version of crystal reports in Delphi anymore. So uh, there was quite a lot of stuff that you know was around in the 2005 era and is no longer good. Then in the 2006 era, we had an interesting experiment called Turbo Delphi. It was a more stable version than 2005. Uh, and I actually did get some work done in here. I liked the old workflow better. So I, I think I spent about 20% of my time running 2006 and about 80% of my time back in Delphi 7 back in 2005. Um, this was a good release though. Uh, I used FastMM, I installed it myself uh, with Delphi 7, but by Delphi 2006, FastMM had become part of the product, uh, which was a good move. Um, they added a lot of IDE features. Live templates was one of them. Um, there were records with methods, which was a good language improvement. Um, people probably aren't using records properly. Uh, and I think that that's actually one of the things that they need to start doing. Um, operator overloading was added here. Uh, class helpers, I love class helpers. 
the language really started to grow in ways that are great. Um, they added the audits and metrics feature. I don't actually use that very much, and I find the user interface for it a little cryptic. It could use a little work, and it hasn't really changed much since 2006. Uh, so I don't actually use the audits and metrics much. I, I love the new features in the IDE, but I found the overall experience of just writing code, compiling, and building was too slow, and so I went back to Delphi 7. So Delphi 2007 was fast enough and good enough and productive enough to let me basically work all day every day and not want to go back to Delphi 7. I still kept Delphi 7 installed on my computer for years because I was just kind of used to it. Um, this is the last version where the VCL controls are still ANSI string. So for people who have old code bases, this is where I would recommend you move up to. Uh, stage all your code here and then do the Unicode migration um, as a second stage. So you get up to a, a modern Delphi version, get everything building with dproj files and working with MS build. Um, this is a stable fast IDE. It has a modern docking style. It uses MS build to build, which really makes the command line building experience much better. Um, it supported Vista controls and dialogues and Vista themes. So this is a little angry guy, uh, and he's stuck before the Unicode transition, and he thinks it's someone else's fault other than his. Um, but my uh, encouragement to every Delphi developer who's listening to my presentation is to consider the idea that you can do this. Um, this is the most misunderstood topic in the history of Delphi. You do not have to make your application even one bit Unicode aware. If you hate Delphi, uh, fine. But if you love Delphi and you're sticking back on the non-Unicode version because you don't want to be Unicode aware, you don't have to be Unicode aware. You can allow silent implicit casting. All you do have to do is stop assuming that a character is a byte and that a byte is a character and that the elements in your strings are bytes because they aren't and they never really were. Silent implicit casting is already happening in your Delphi 7 VCL applications. When you move up, you're actually going to make your system faster because there's going to be less of it only when it has to happen, which is when you're talking to the Windows uh, user interface components, which it already has been doing for you. So when you fix the wrong assumptions in your code, your code doesn't change so that it can't run in the old versions of Delphi. You could have the same code that will run in Delphi 2007 and in a modern version, and they just don't have any mistakes in it, and it will work in both places. So most Delphi programmers, though, have weak component and package development skills, and most code bases are very poorly structured, and they have sprawling dependencies. And this is why it's difficult for many people to move their code up. Um, intransigence is another reason. But it's easier to blame Delphi and think that there's some magic switch that could have been placed in the code that could have made your job easier. There isn't a magic switch that could have been placed into the code to make your job easier, and anything that you think that there could be that could make that job easier is a mistaken assumption and anybody who thinks otherwise should get in touch with me and I will sort you out. Uh, apps that do not need to be Unicode aware themselves should still be upgraded to a modern Delphi version because the Windows platform has evolved since 1998 and your apps are not deploying on Windows 98 anymore. Your platform is a Unicode platform on Windows XP, on Windows Vista, on Windows 7, on Windows 8. And so please do not shipwreck yourself. Um, staying on a very old Delphi version. I'm not saying this because I want Embarcadero to make more money off of you, although, you know, I like Embarcadero. I, I think they sell a good product, but I'm not saying this for their benefit. I'm saying this for yours. Don't shipwreck yourself. So, Delphi 2009. Boom! They've shipped Unicode. The first Delphi with Unicode and generics. It actually wasn't a big job for me. I actually understood the, uh, the need and I understood what would have to happen. The Code Gear guys uh, basically got acquired by Embarcadero, so this is the first release that was done with the Embarcadero logo on it, and I'm really glad that Embarcadero acquired the Code Gear team and uh, division, and Embarcadero has done a really good job with Delphi. So uh, this was a huge leap forward. I ported all of my code base. I was working for a scientific instrument company. I had built a huge number of things in Delphi. I ported all of that code, all of those components. It took me about two months to do 400,000 lines of my code. Um, there was a couple hundred thousand lines of third-party component code as well, and I ported some of that as well. So that's a conservative number there. I ported more than 400k lines of code in a little bit less than two months. So I had a lot of IDE stability issues because of the new compiler uh, features. There were some strange things that happened. 
I was working on a pretty large set of code bases with large sets of components. Um, but the remote debug experience alone, even if you didn't need the Unicode change, was worth moving up from 2007 to 2009 because this is the first really great remote debugger version. Um, there were some compiler internal errors that were essentially really hard to uh, figure out how to fix. They were caused by the new generics features, but if you did not use the generics code, and most existing code didn't, um, you wouldn't have run into those. So besides the fact that string equals Unicode string now, um, there's generics and collections, anonymous methods, uh, the exit uh, statement could take a, a return value. And it looks like a procedure call, but it's really not. It's actually a keyword. Um, and DataSnap was rebuilt in Delphi 2009. So this is 2008, so this is seven years ago. So 2010 was a really good incremental version. Uh, it was not hard for me to move up. Uh, it was a welcome change uh, from the large effort that I expended from 2007 to 2009. Um, and if you wonder why I have so no sympathy for people who have still haven't made this change in 2015, it's because it's been eight or nine years. And so, yeah, no, I'm out of sympathy. Um, attributes, code formatting, this was a good feature. Debug visualizers, this is underused. People should actually learn what this is and start utilizing this feature. You can build plugins for the debugger to help you see the state of your application. That is just fantastic. Debug time components, basically. Um, the touch support was added to the VCL. Um, it's funny, now the hardware is getting to the point where every laptop is almost coming with a touch screen. This feature was added, I think, a little ahead of its time and wasn't used much at, at that time, but now, you know, I think that touch support in the VCL is just as important as all of the mobile platform support in Delphi recently, and it's underappreciated. It's a great feature. Um, the new enhanced RTTI feature was a fantastic uh, addition to the language. Um, the delayed DLL loading supported right inside the language instead of having to hand code that. That's a great improvement. Uh, IDE Insight is my best friend. Uh, started using it back in this version and kept using it. The F6 key is your friend. So Delphi XE, at this time I was an Embarcadero employee. I was working on AppWave uh, browser. Uh, I felt basically that while I was at Embarcadero, we were actually using the product, but I wasn't you know, in the same office as the guys working on Delphi itself. But I talked to some of the guys who were developing Delphi at the time and communicated to them that I saw kind of a nice improvement between 2010 and XE um, instability. And we moved the AppWave uh, browser product up from 2010 to XE very rapidly. Um, and we enjoyed the additional stability because a lot of effort had gone into QA and testing and continues to go into QA and testing. And I see kind of a good upward stability curve here. This is just a little chart for not scientific or based on anything real, it's just subjective. Uh, but I really think that the quality curve of the IDE is in a really good, uh, going in a really good direction. Every release they're, they're putting effort into this and this is really important to me. It's the one thing that I look forward to every release is can I work a little faster, can I work a little better? Um, they added some features though, cloud service support, which I haven't actually used much. Um, the version control integration, this is a fantastic addition to the IDE. Um, I personally love Mercurial, but whether you use Mercurial, Subversion, or Git, uh, the latest Delphi XE7 now supports all three and is fully integrated into the IDE. I sure hope you're not using Visual Source Safe. Tell me you're not using Source Safe. Uh, regular expression libraries were around uh, as third party libraries, but now it's built right in. Um, and one of the nice things that happened in the XE release was they added the Final Builder and AQ Time and Code Site product bundled. Um, I haven't had the best experience with the AQ Time product, but the Code Site one, uh, I still use it heavily. Uh, and I've, I've got a post on my blog about why I like Code Site so much. I think it's fantastic. Final Builder uh, is actually also really good, but I actually have been personally using. Uh, a command line build instead of a GUI based building system uh, and I'm using MS build uh, from the command line along with uh, you know some build automation tools that work at the command line level uh, and then I run that on the web with uh, Jenkins or Hudson but Final Builder is a fantastic product as well and I urge anybody who hasn't checked it out to check it out as well um, XE2 was the first version with 64-bit which uh, my current employer uses very heavily we have our whole product working in 32-bit and 64-bit. Um, if you cannot tackle the Unicode question, you can never make a 64-bit application. Let me put that to you that way. If you cannot understand the Unicode transition, you will never ship a reliable 64-bit Delphi product in your life. Once you understand how to move up to Unicode, you'll know some of the skills that you need in order to make your app 
properly work in 64-bit because you need to avoid making certain assumptions in 64-bit, primarily that a pointer is the same size as an integer. Um, it's not. Um, and you need to be able to spot those assumptions in code, just like you learned to do for the Unicode. Um, getting up to 64-bit was not as hard as getting up to Unicode uh, for most people, but uh, really worth doing, getting your application out there and able to run on 64-bit windows and consume 64, you know, more than two or three gigabytes of RAM. Um, live bindings were added to the language. This is another underappreciated, underused feature that I think is great. Um, DataSnap Mobile was added. Uh, that was basically the mobile connectors, I believe, uh, so that you could have a DataSnap server written in Delphi and that can talk to a mobile app written in any a variety of different languages. Um, VCL styles, uh, this is a nice feature. It's being improved even more over time. Uh, but basically just getting rid of all that button face gray in your app and making your whole app look great. Um, there were some third party tools out there, but uh, and there's actually still another third party option from Developer Express, but to have the VCL styles built right into the VCL in modern Windows application development, it's just an, I think, an essential, essential thing that really moved the VCL into the modern era. Uh, FireMonkey Framework, this was the first release of it. Uh, there was some preliminary uh, iOS support. Uh, there was some decent Mac OS X desktop support. Um, I used XE2 for audiovisual and medical uh, software that on um, two different companies. And XE2 is still out there and heavily used. Some people have stayed on XE2 for a while. An excellent version of Delphi. Uh, at this point I started rescuing out of print Delphi components like DCP Crypt and I started Bitbucket projects to host them. Uh, whenever I notice something really good has been you know, abandoned by its developer and the website has gone down, um, I try and have a Bitbucket project. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm the official maintainer, it just means someone's keeping the open source stuff open source and up on the web and available. Um, another one that I'm kind of probably the de facto maintainer of, I don't know if anyone else is, is tembeddedwb from bsalsa.com. So XE3 pulled back the preliminary iOS support, which was probably half-baked to begin with. Um, it added record helpers for built-in types like string.length. This is a really cool feature. Um, the first metro styles were added to the VCL styles. Um, the stability was a nice improvement because XE2 actually did have some stability uh, issues still and some of those were fixed. Um, those were usually things that you would encounter when you were doing what I'm doing, which is using very large source code. Basis. Um, there were some FireMonkey improvements, but in my opinion, basically FireMonkey as a mobile platform was still evolving rapidly and not in great shape. Um, in XE4, a lot of effort went into fixing bugs, not just adding features. I appreciated all the effort that the Delphi team put into this. Thank you guys if you listen to this presentation. You know, it might seem like you spent three weeks fixing one bug, but if you stopped, you know, some problem from happening that allowed a developer like me to keep working, I'm thankful for that. So. Uh, product management team at Delphi, this stuff is important and continue to prioritize that stuff because all your customers need it. Um, I've been using Mercurial at this point for some time and I really love Mercurial. Uh, I started getting interested in using uh, continuous integration with my version control to do things like bisecting bugs and so I started getting interested in you know building tools to help me do that. Um, I don't know if anybody has seen how Git bisect works, but I was trying to do the same thing with uh, Mercurial. Um, XE4 shipped new iOS support. Um, that support has been um, evolving release by release to support new features and platforms and uh, visual uh, sizes and device levels. Um, and basically to keep up with iOS version releases as well. Um, keeping up with mobile platform technology is a very big job and so you know, I think by this point, everybody probably who wants to use the mobile support, probably you want to be on some kind of a support agreement and getting the new versions and moving up to them uh, every single time they release because the mobile platform support is rapidly uh, growing and improving and adding, getting new features. Uh, FireDAC was added in this release, uh, which is planned to replace DB Express. And both of those essentially are, I'd say, acceptable to use. Hopefully nobody's using the BDE anymore. In fact, by uh, these days, I don't think it ships in the product anymore. Uh, you have to install BDE separately. Uh, XE5 was another incremental bump uh, as far as, uh, and I'm not saying that as a bad thing. That's the highest praise I can give over these is that it's a, a bump in improvement in stability and memory. 
Um, incremental improvements on mobile development were made here. I've only done demo scale work on mobile apps, so I'm not the person to tell you how to go about you know, building large mobile apps or uh, production scale mobile stuff. Uh, I'm more of an expert on the Windows desktop. Um, Android support was added. That had been added for, asked for for a long time, and I really think at this release it started to look like a pretty, a pretty cool uh, platform when you can target all these different kinds of devices with one IDE. Uh, the REST client library uh, added uh, some good client-side support to what had already been good REST servers library support, uh, making REST development a lot easier. XE6 is also an incremental version. Uh, during these times, XE5 and XE6, I was basically using XE5 or XE6. XE6 is where my current employer is actually uh, working for most of the developers on the team because although XE7 is the current release, XE6 and XE7 work equally well for us. I ported all our components up very easily, uh, just making new packages where necessary and adding some defines where necessary. Um, really, XE6 and XE7 are fantastic. Um, app tethering was added in XE6. Apache support was re-added for Datasnap. Um, and the BDE is no longer in the default install, so hopefully you are no longer using the BDE. You shouldn't have been anyways. Um, and XE7 is the latest release. Uh, it's a minor incremental upgrade from XE6. I've noticed uh, some desktop stability uh, improvements and just you know continued work on that. And most of the team at my current employer, though, didn't even really find there was really much of a difference. They, so they basically decided we'll stay on XE6. Um, there were some nice dynamic array improvements added to the language. Uh, obviously, we haven't just jumped in and added those to our code base right away, so we don't need them where I'm working right now, but it's really quite nice. Um, the dynamic array improvements also, I think, are interesting to anybody who had been used to using a string as if it was a byte string. I think you should be using a dynamic array of bytes these days if you really want to store a lot of bytes. Um, or, yeah, you know, even a non-dynamic array, just using a, a array of something and setting its length. Uh, this is a better way to, uh, to manage byte storage. Uh, parallel programming for threads. Uh, this library was added. It's a nice improvement. Uh, we're not heavily using it, but I actually think that I will end up using this where I'm working right now. And in that case, obviously, we would be moving to the newest version. Uh, BD is still not part so when I compare all my favorite versions, I kind of think of these as like a Ford F-150. If you don't like Ford, too bad for you. I love Fords. Uh, to me, an XC6, XC7 is sort of like the 2014, 2015 uh, model of a Ford F-150. It's a pretty awesome truck. Delphi 2007 is kind of like my mid-90s equivalent for the truck. Still a pretty good truck, and if you you know wanted to run a business, you could probably still use it to drive you around. but probably time to think about integrating upgrading and if you're anything other than a retired hobbyist I don't really see you know much point in Delphi 7 is fun to have around but really basically I don't think it's professionally up to the level of the modern releases um, and if you're writing professional software that's supposed to run on today's versions of Windows to me you should be running on XC6 or XC7 what is Delphi's role in software development in my opinion since I've admitted I'm biased in Delphi's favor does Delphi have a long-term role to play in the software development world? Yes, it does. It's fantastic for business software development, always has been, and I think always will be. Uh, by business software development, I, I mean any vertical market that's useful to a business that needs software. Delphi is, I think, one of the premier tools for building that vertical market business software. What are the critical strengths and weaknesses? Uh, that's a hard question. But basically, to me, the critical strength of Delphi is the way that it enables developer productivity. What's the critical weakness that needs to be worked on right now? Every person who uses Delphi is probably going to have their own different answer for that. So <coughs> to, in order to have a general answer for that that I think applies to the whole market, basically I think Delphi needs to move to 64-bit soon. Um, and I think that they are expending engineering effort and, and trying to get up to 64-bit. Uh, I do think that Windows is going to continue to be the core platform where the IDE needs to live. I don't think that they need to move the IDE anywhere else. Uh, to me, the main thing they need to work on is support for large code bases and perhaps actually breaking the product into multiple process uh, level chunks so that the processes have 
uh, some isolation from each other and so that the IDE and the compiler and so on are talking to each other in several processes. Um, I don't think very many IDEs have moved to that yet, but I think that's where IDEs need to go, all of them. Um, kind of the way Google Chrome works with every tab being its own process. So what is the value proposition of Delphi? Uh, RAD is a form of higher order programming, rapid application development, getting programs built in a visual way, not just the graphical part, but the non-graphical parts using non-visual components. It's not a silver bullet, but it's a solid advantage, and I think it's a really good workflow. Uh, it's a really great way to promote reusability. It's a really good way to promote decoupling, to promote unit testability of software, to make components which can be tested, um, non-visual and visual components. Um, there are other ways of doing higher order programming. All of them tend to not be the mainstream products. That's why I'm comparing Delphi not with C++ here, but with Lisp and Smalltalk. People who are going to adopt Delphi are going to adopt it because they're basically smart enough and free thinking enough to not just automatically go with C Sharp because everyone else is going with C Sharp. And so the kind of people who would look at Lisp and see an advantage and go with that, who would look at Smalltalk and see an advantage, those kinds of engineers who think for themselves, I think, are the people who are going to choose Delphi. And they're the ones who are going to accept the value proposition of Delphi, which is that it is something that amplifies their effectiveness as a developer. Um, I think the people who are sheep are going to pick Java and C Sharp, and uh, never mind the fact that they might be less productive and be able to build less in a given amount of time uh, with those tools. So the language itself, not just the IDE and the framework, I think is actually part of Delphi's productivity. Uh, modern object Pascal is reasonably safe, safer than C and C++. Not quite as safe as C Sharp, but without the heavy runtime overhead of the .NET framework, I think it's a really good trade-off. Um, compared to C++, which is useful, expressive, and unreasonably complex, kind of, I would say insane, and unsafe, uh, Delphi is a clear win over C++ when you're choosing implementation languages. Java and C Sharp prioritize safety so much because of C and C++'s weaknesses that they actually go into opposite holes where they impose overhead on users because of their managed memory models. I find Delphi has a really useful slot in between these because it's not managed, it's fast. And yet, it uses a very simple default memory model that I think almost anybody can program against safely and correctly. Uh, Delphi provides a blend of speed, power, and flexibility. Almost all the features of C++, although notably not all of them, mostly all the features it doesn't have are the ones that I think are the bad parts of C++. Um, and it has a lot of safety and expressiveness, uh, like C Sharp and Java, although not as much C expressiveness as C Sharp and Java 1.8. I think it has enough. So native tools like C++ and Delphi are going to be faster than VM-based tools, and VM-based tools are generally going to be safer. Uh, for non-performance critical work, perhaps C Sharp and Java have some areas where they have, you know, overall more strengths than weaknesses, but I think that, that you're eventually going to run into something you can't do with C Sharp and Java. Uh, I have not run into anything I can't do in Delphi. Productivity and velocity are my number one reasons for using Delphi, but performance has got to be like 1.1 or 1.2 reason, maybe number, okay, reason number two. Backwards compatibility is, you know, also a very strong element of the Delphi value proposition. So what are the challenges? I don't see a strong competitor to ASP.NET technology in the current product um, for server side stuff or a competitor to the Java Tomcat model. If you're a Java guy, I really do think the ID needs to go 64 bit. Um, I think the 64 bit compiler needs some more optimization work. Uh, the developers of my current employer, including me, experienced some performance and memory problems on very large projects. Uh, Embarcadero has released a QA note about this, uh, and they're working on this. I know that they care about this and they're working on it. It's something that's affecting me a lot, and I know it's affecting other people, and they are working on it. Uh, our main application is one of the largest Delphi applications I've ever seen. It's around 4 million lines of code. I hate to say that, but it's not possible to split it up. So basically, we need to be able to work with that large code base. So. The IDE packages we install, over 250 of them weigh in at a couple hundred megabytes of RAM when they're loaded. So for the future with Delphi and me, uh, native multi-platform is unique and exciting and I'm glad to see the product growing. 
But to me, uh, the number one thing I want is the fundamental IDE and compiler scaling work, whether it's compiler optimization or uh, ability to use more memory or ability to support 32-bit large address aware or 64-bit IDE, something that will basically expand the capabilities of the IDE in a fundamental way. That's what I want. Uh, I work on a large code base and I need that. Uh, but my expectations management is that there's not going to be any free lunches and that basically there's going to be a pattern of, I'd say, good progress, but it's going to take a while. Um, mobile is an important thing. It's taking up some of the R&D time. The desktop uh, is going to continue to be important for 10 or 20 years at least. And so I expect all of us, users and the Delphi team themselves, are going to put work in to maintain uh, you know, our code bases. And I think adding platforms and so on, this is great stuff. Um, I do expect some growing pains, but in the end, I think in the end, Delphi is actually going to continue to be my favorite product out there. Uh, I don't think there's anything else out there that I could, you know, go and use instead that I could be happier with. Delphi is still the best thing. I think mobile is important, but it's not as important to me personally as desktop and server side development. So I think Delphi's future rests secure in desktop and servers, and I think mobile is a bonus feature. Um, an add-on, an accessory to go with your desktop apps. I think most users who have commercial software businesses could probably continue like that with their desktop, their mobile apps basically being free add-ons or 99 cent tools that they add on to their main business. Um, add-ons that I love for Delphi. I wanted to give a shout out to some of the people who built awesome add-ons for Delphi. Andreas Hausladen rocks. Uh, you've got to go to his website and check out IDE Fixpack and the DDEV extensions. They are amazing. Um, please understand that he builds what he builds with some help from Embarcadero. Embarcadero is to be praised for the existence of IDE Fixpack and DDEV extensions, not criticized for the fact that not all of these improvements that help some people and don't help other people aren't all in the product. What happens is when Andreas makes a great fix and it doesn't have any downside and doesn't cause regressions for any customers, Embarcadero does build those features and fixes back into the IDE. Andreas is working as a partner with Embarcadero to make Delphi better. Embarcadero deserves praise for what he's doing and Andreas deserves praise for it. So please, I, I'm sick of hearing people whining about Andreas's fixes and saying, why aren't they all in the IDE? Well, learn what's going on and pay attention. Embarcadero cares about fixing the product up just as much as Andreas and I do. Uh, and they're working hard at this. So I think, uh, you know, Give Embarcadero a break here. Uh, G-Experts is a, probably the largest third-party IDE add-on for expert tools. Uh, I love its file open dialog for finding files in directories and quickly opening them. I think people need to try that. CN Pack has a lot of equivalent features. Um, try those two out. They have a lot of extra features. My advice is when you install those, turn off all the features that you don't use and add features one at a time because when you try and learn one of these mega packs all at once. It just gets in your way, all these features. Just add one feature that, that might make your life better. Try the file open dialog in G-Experts and then try one more feature and add those over time slowly. Some third-party components that I love. Uh, there's Virtual Tree View, which is open source. Uh, the TMS component packs and the Developer Express component packs are the two uh, most popular commercial third-party component packs right now. I know there's a lot of Delphi shops using those two packs. Fast Reports ships with the product uh, as a basic edition, but there's a full edition that you can also purchase as an add-on. That's my current favorite uh, reporting engine. Uh, there's a new uh, profiling system called Nexus Quality Suite that's just come out, and I'm going to be doing a blog post and a review of that soon. I'm still playing with that, and I'm quite impressed with it initially. Um, and CodeSight, I've blogged about this. I absolutely love CodeSight. If you have not checked out and spent some time learning CodeSight, you really should. So uh, there's actually a more up-to-date roadmap on the internet than when I made this. Uh, so if I, you're seeing this on YouTube, just check the link below. I think Embarcadero has released a better roadmap than uh, anything I have here. Uh, Embarcadero is heavily you know, investing in engineering uh, on the product and is moving the product forward. And they do have a roadmap published. They have confirmed that they are working on 64-bit iOS. Uh, and they've publicly confirmed that they've acquired Castilia and they're building the features of Castilia, which was a third party tool, uh, similar to G-Experts, but some extra features. Uh, and they're building that into the product. So uh, since this is a web presentation, uh, you can send questions and discuss on my blog. Um, I hope you've enjoyed hearing my experiences and my recollections as a Delphi developer and my thoughts about where Delphi is going. 
I'd like to hear your thoughts and comments on on my blog. Thank you for listening. <laughs>